Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, of course this is uh, Shackleton, who's extremely warm. We're having a, a uh, heat wave uh, in Ottawa at the moment, and uh, you know temperatures 35 degrees uh, thereabouts Celsius plus, which is a bit fitting. We're also in a drought, so it's a little bit fitting that this video and probably the next one um, are all about uh, drought projections in the CMIP-6 forcing scenarios. So drought, of course, is a very severe problem. And as the hy hydrological cycle gets disrupted around the world, not only does drought, um, you know, cause water shortages in various places, uh, people don't have sufficient drinking water, but we convert water essentially into food and, uh, you know, exacerbated droughts, long lasting, you know, that type of extreme weather event and cl or climate event um, can have very, very severe consequences to regions. So I'll just remind you that in Syria um, from 2006 to 2010, they had one of the worst droughts in a thousand years. And it basically eliminated the livelihood of 1.5 million uh, farmers in the rural region. So they had no income, could not grow food, and they migrated to the cities and there were no jobs there. And uh, basically strife happened and uh, you know th things, things went downhill as other countries uh, started to get into the void. So, you know, the, so basically CMIP-6, it's the they're the latest model runs that are used, will be used for the next IPCC report. So they run a whole bunch of models and they look at the um, multi-model ensemble, MME they call it, running these, these state-of-the-art climate models. And then they look for robustness between the models where a robustness coefficient of one or it would be 100% agreement between models. Um, anything over about 90% agreement they they say it's it's a robust um, result so climate change um, of course increases the drought risk and severity but it depends a lot on regional there's a lot of regional and seasonal dependencies and uh, also it depends on what drought metric you use so you know we think of drought as lack of precipitation but it turns out that there's three types of drought, if you like. There's meteorological drought, which is lack of precipitation. That's the first type. There's agricultural drought, which is um, de the soil moisture is not sufficient to, to grow crops. And hydrological drought, or, you know, it's, it's a runoff effect. If the ground is too hard, any, any rainfall that there is will run off the ground. It won't go into the ground. And uh, that leads to drought also. So those are the three main things. And it turns out from this paper, which uh, was recently published that I'm discussing in this video and probably the next, soil mo moisture is um, so both soil moisture and runoff drying are more widespread and robust than the precipitation changes, and uh, the soil. The, so, so the um, the severity of these effects increases strongly with warming. Um, now, the CMIP uh, six simulations are compared to the CMIP five, and they're mostly um, they're very very similar, except. Um, there's some differences in the transition between areas that are very, very wet and areas that are very, very dry. Um, regional hotspots um, with strong drying are Western North America, Central America, Europe and the Mediterranean region, the Amazon, Southern Africa, China, Southeast Asia, and Australia. And the model, the climate models that are looked at to assess these drought conditions are, they call them, um, well, we, most people know them as the RCPs, 
but I, they, they call them SSPs in this paper. I'm just wondering if they're going to change the name of them, the scenario names for the next IPCC report. So drought under the 2.6, RCP 2.6 and 4.5 scenarios is, is bad, and under 7 and 8.5, it's, it's horrible. Um, but it's not just the means that are looked at. The risk of historically, the, the historical most extreme droughts it goes way, way up with warming, up 200, 300% in some regions. So there's a big temperature dependency on the drought, of course. It's not just precipitation. So if it's warmer, there's more evapotranspiration. There's more moisture loss from the soils. Um, and, uh, you know, if it's in a region in the north, for example, the snow conditions are changing. And also vegetation processes can change. So when there's more CO2, uh, that can change the amount of water that uh, plants uh, utilize and that can affect the the drought so these the shifts in hydroclimate um, is actually one of the most important regional consequences of climate change for people and ecosystems so CMIP 6 stands for coupled model intercomparison project and there's a lot of people working on this, and there's various uh, attribution detection studies being done. You know, people often ask me, you know, where, where, where to live to endure, you know, abrupt climate change. And, you know, it's an interesting topic. It, uh, you know, views, views change, my views change on it, but they're pretty consistent. But it's a lot easier to say where not to live. And one of the, you know, some of the areas that are projected to have extreme drought are areas that you don't want to live in. You know, the idea that wet areas get wetter, dry areas get drier, it does not always hold with large temperature shifts, with the, you know, changes of the jet stream configuration. Um, you can get a lot of um, weather whiplashing, so tremendous rainfall in regions and then drought the following year and then tremendous rainfall it can whiplash between the two and like i said the plant physiological response to increase co2 means that water use efficiency is supposed to increase for for some plants so it's so-called it will cause a change in the surface drying rates it'll modulate them um, so what this study does is it looks at the historical simulation, basically it looks from 1850 to 2014. Um, it looks at the, you know, it plugs in the RCP scenarios. It looks at all the natural forcings like volcanic, solar, orbital changes, and then the anthropogenic forcings from humans, greenhouse gases, aerosols, land use change. And it looks at the parameters, two meter surface air temperature the precipitation rate in millimeters per day, the soil moisture um, content at the surface within the top 10 centimeters of soil, and the total going down deeper to the water table. So that'll be in kilograms of water per square meter of, of soil or cubic meter if you take the whole volume. Um, surface runoff. Um, so there's runoff, in, there's drainage basically into rivers, etc., bodies of water, but also deep down in below the soils. So that can happen. And like I said, there's the three types of drought that are considered, and most droughts are a factor of all three. So meteorological, low precipitation, agricultural, the soil moisture, and hydrological, or the runoff. So the baseline is taken as 1851 to 1880, and the anomalies and changes are all looked relative to that. And in the paper, they talk about, they do the modeling for the years 2071 to 2100. Um, now, most people, you know, a lot of people will scoff at that and say, well, yeah, right, 2071, 50 years from now. Um, and, uh, you know, in terms of the modeling and the results, it's not so sensitive to the date. I mean, if climate change is happening much quicker than 
we expect. So, you know, maybe the, what's in the model for 2071 would happen in 2050 or 2040, for example, right? But the, 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 these, things, these models are sort of the best handle we can get on, you know, drought under climate change. And uh, they're important for that. So they divide it up into four seasons, you know, December, January, February, winter, March, April, May, spring, June, July, August, summer, and September, October, November. Um, the robustness metric, R is zero if there's no agreement in models. R is one perfect agreement, 100%. If it's greater than 90%, it's robust. If it's 80, it's good agreement. If it's 95%, it's very, very good agreement. And extreme droughts are the driest 10% uh, of, of all years. Okay, so let's look at the paper now. And uh, I'll focus on the figures. Okay, there's about uh, 12 figures or so to show you. Okay, first of all, um, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. And I summarized the World Meteorological Organization report recently. Um, they do a report every five years. And please consider donating to support my efforts. So I tweeted out the paper, 21st Century Drought Projections in the CMIP-6 Forcing Scenarios, my next topic for videos, and also on, um, also on uh, Facebook. And, uh, okay, so here's the paper. So let's look at the, the key things. But before I do, I forgot, I wanted to point out this uh, book here. It's called Elastic by Len Leonard uh, Mladenov. He's written a number of different books. And it's about flexible thinking in a time of change. So all about elastic thinking. And, uh, you know, it, it's excellent. I mean, I could give... A summary and a video on some of the key results from it if people were were interested i mean there's analytic log analytical or logical thinking but there's also the flexible thinking which allows you to come up you know think outside the box come up with great ideas etc okay so let's look at the key figures um in this uh paper okay so this is global surface air temperature anomalies. So this is uh, surface air temperature. Okay, and these are the four scenarios, SSP scenarios, which equate to the um, RCP 2.6, 4.5, 7.0, 8.5, as far as I know. And this is 1850 to, uh, you know, um, 2100 is the, the timeline. So, so this is the data. The observation is the black line, and these are what the different scenarios are in terms of the warming. So this is uh, Kelvin or degrees Celsius up here. So 2.6, uh, you know, over, you know, about 2.2, 2.3 degrees, and then so on. Uh, you know, higher for the more forcing, and high, you know, you can see the different lines and the uncertainties are the bands. So if the in the green, this is the average here. This is the mean. And this is the spread here, this, okay, the standard deviation, the spread. And you can see the different models, what they show for surface air temperature um, modeling, um, the best projections that we have. Of course, these are modified and updated and more physics is put into the models. Um, but you still, you know, the, it's the observations, it's what actually happens that is, that is the key. Okay, um, now what this is, is uh, this is the change in precipitation now in terms of percentage. So these are the four different, these are three different scenarios that it looks at in this case, 2.6, 4.5, and 7.0. This is the RCP equivalent models. And we've got December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. And this is the change in precipitation. Okay, so the drying areas are the brown areas. Okay, so you can see that, um, for example, in South Africa, South America and South Africa, the drying is more severe in the summer, June, July, August. And you can, but you can look at a particular area and see how it changes over time. So the Northern Hemisphere is getting wetter. 
in general each month and some areas are getting drier 